Hi, Douglas Simonson here coming to you from Mexico with something a little different today. I have been a successful artist for over 40 years now and a lot of people ask me how I did it. So today in this video I'm going to tell you how I turned myself into a successful artist. My mom was an artist, so when I started to show some talent at an early age, I got a lot of encouragement at home. In fact, everybody in my little town in western Nebraska just took it for granted that I was going to be an artist, which kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I decided I was not going to be an artist. I didn't want to be what everybody else expected me to be, so I fought it. I went a lot of years without drawing or painting at all. But when I did draw, I used to draw naked men. But in my teens and early 20s, I was pretty conflicted about being gay, so I was ashamed and I would tear up those drawings immediately so nobody would ever see them. It was only later when I was like 30, living in Hawaii, after a lot of therapy and seminars and just growing up, that I finally realized I was okay just the way I am. That I did not have to change, being gay is not a problem, and I was not messed up. This was huge for me. And when I finally did accept myself, you know what? It was like flipping a switch. I went from being totally afraid to being totally fearless. I not only stopped tearing up those drawings, I started showing them to everybody. Well, then something surprising happened. At least I was surprised. My friends started wanting to buy my art. This was when I had the first inkling that maybe I could turn this into a business. You see, I think most artists dream of becoming an artist and somehow making a living at it, but not wanting to really deal with the business end of things. Me, I dreamed of starting a business and wasn't that interested in being an artist. But it was what I could do and people wanted to buy what I was producing. There was a slight problem. This was in like 1980 when galleries were definitely not showing male nudes. Plus, I was in Honolulu where there weren't that many galleries to begin with. And you got to remember, this was long before the internet. So, I had a problem. What was I going to do? How was I going to get my art seen? How was I going to build this business? The answer was magazines. Gay skin magazines like Concho and Mandate, Blue Boy, etc. were, in those days, the gay internet before the internet. They were not just skin magazines, they were actually a large part of how our community connected with each other. So I thought, I'll put ads in those magazines and see if I can get people to send for one of my brochures. So I put tiny ads in several of these magazines and got some brochures printed and pretty soon people started writing for brochures. And then I would send them photographs, slides actually, because they were cheaper to print, and a price list. And that's how I started selling my art, by mail. Well, it took a few years and I had to work a lot of side jobs in the beginning to get along, but bit by bit I started to get collectors and I started to sell my work more consistently. And it didn't hurt that I was drawing a lot during this time and constantly pushing myself to become a better artist. So the work was improving too. Plus, I was learning how to ignore that voice in my head, you know, the critical voice, and more on that later. I do want to make an important point here, and that is I had a great advantage over a lot of other artists because I had a clearly defined target market right from the start, gay men. I also didn't have a lot of competition because not a lot of other artists were drawing naked men back in those days. They were scared. Not me. Okay, so now it's the early 1990s and I've got a business that's perking along pretty well, especially considering I have to sell art through the mail. So a wonderful thing started happening around this time and that was the internet. This was a wonderful thing for me because I had been waiting for the internet for years without even really knowing it. I mean, I was a computer geek before there were computers. So when the internet came along, I was like, yes. I immediately got a book and taught myself how to write HTML and in just a few weeks, I put up my first website. 
And this is what it looked like when it first went live in 1995. I had a big advantage being one of the first artists to sell art online. Plus, I already had a lot of customers who could now see my art without waiting for the mail to arrive. This is when my business really started to take off. Pretty soon I was able to hire an assistant. And I needed one because I was selling more art, shipping more art, and making more money. And that meant I could travel more, I could photograph more beautiful men in more exotic locations and produce more art and more products for my website. Okay, somewhere along in here, I had a big realization. I realized that I loved being an artist. I had been in denial about it since I was a kid and felt like it was being forced down my throat. And I had convinced myself that I was just doing this because it was a good business idea. But the truth was, and I finally realized this, I am an artist through and through. It's who I am. I couldn't deny it any longer. So, getting to know yourself better is always a good thing. And in this case, I went from being a fairly happy guy to being a really happy guy. Because I was doing what I loved and no longer fighting it. If you've visited my website, you know that I have a lot of products besides original art. This is because, right from the start, I approached this as a business and I knew that just having original art wasn't going to cut it, that I needed other products too. So from fairly early on, I was having cards and calendars and prints and posters made as well so that I would have more products to offer. This took a certain amount of faith in myself, but I was so committed to the business that I took that leap of faith. However, I was still working on my self-image as an artist. For instance, I used to throw away all my practice sketches because I thought they weren't good enough to show until one day somebody wanted to buy some of them and I realized I needed to change the way I thought about them. Now rough sketches are one of my best selling products. Similarly, I never showed my photographs to anybody because I always thought of them as just reference for making drawings and paintings from and then one day somebody wanted to buy some of them and I now sell dozens of photographic prints every month. What I'm saying here is that the bigger the range of products and prices you have, the more options your collectors have and the more sales you'll make. I'm also saying that sometimes you need to listen to your collectors and ignore that critical voice in your own head. This brings me to one of the most important parts of turning yourself into a successful artist, and that is learning to ignore the voice. In those beginning years when I wasn't well known and I wasn't selling art sometimes for months at a time, I would sometimes get depressed and think that I was a failure. But I always pulled myself out of it and kept producing art, in spite of the voice. I know you know about the voice. We all have it. It's that voice that says, hey, nobody's ever going to buy your art. You suck as an artist. Oh, and by the way, you suck as a human being too. Want to know how I became a successful artist? I learned to ignore the voice. I believe the biggest difference between success and failure is how well we learn to ignore that self-critical inner voice. I think it comes down to that moment when you say to the voice, no, you don't know who I am. You don't know what I'm capable of. Now shut up and let me paint. It's the point at which you begin to understand that that voice is not who you are. It's your past. It's the voices of people who, for whatever reason, wanted to keep you small and powerless, and you were young and you didn't know better, and you believed them. But you know better now. It takes practice to learn to ignore the voice and just keep painting, just keep drawing. But when you do ignore it, it gets quieter over time. And the quieter the voice gets, the more joyful your life becomes. Okay, so let's sum up. Basically, it comes down to two things. One, learn to ignore the voice and have faith in yourself. And two, when you have faith in yourself, when you believe in yourself, you will always find a way forward. Oh yeah, and three, practice drawing a lot. Okay, that's my story. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some encouragement, maybe some inspiration. And for more inspiration, be sure to look at my other videos on this channel and subscribe. And go to my website to see more of my art and how I built a successful product line. 
Thanks for watching and remember, you were born to create.